you're holding Bitcoin, it is something for a long run. It's not a one-off investment, right? It's something that you hold for a long period of time. It's almost like holding real estate. Ensure that when you're buying, you're not buying in the note of wanting to sell immediately. There is no quick money in this space. I am sorry to tell you. It is just like every other asset out there. You have to take your time, watch the market before you invest to ensure that you get maximum profit in return. It can be a lot to handle, but there's also a space on incur of blockchain technology merging with artificial intelligence and even internet of things iot so you see that this is why this show is here we are here to educate you to inform you right of the latest happening so that you don't get carried away by information Hello and welcome to the Digital Assets Show on your one and only Pop Central TV channel 189, streaming live from DSTV. I am your host, Purity Chrome, for today. I'm so sorry. Shagun is not here today. (laughs) Nonetheless, happy new month, my darlings. This month, I pray that your pockets and your investments be full and fat. May the God of Digital Assets Show bless your investments. <laughs> Happy New Month, darling. I am really pumped and I am really pumped because it is Libra season. And in Libra season, of course, this wonderful, beautiful girl you're seeing seated here was born. It is the month of October and it is my birthday month. So yes, I am extremely excited for what is yet to come. So quickly, what happened during the beginning of this month? As at the beginning of this month in October, October 1st, I believe it was recorded, if we could bring up on the screen, a listing between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin fell um, a little bit at the beginning of the month and investors were retreating to fall back to, you know, our altcoins, right? Your safe havens. So on record between Bitcoin and Ethereum, Bitcoin saw a total of $54.2 million in net outflows, while Ethereum saw a total of two point, sorry, $3.2 million in net outflows. Now, for people, when that risk actually happened and then there was a drop, people were scared and lots of people sold out their assets. But irrespective, it has actually gone back to, I think, 60-something plus, 62 plus, 60 plus, thereabout, right? So it was kind of a scare because Bitcoin is actually one of the largest cryptocurrency and it fell to as much as 5.7%, right, on Tuesday. And that was one of, like, the biggest decline that have ever happened since September 6th. And obviously, for other altcoins like Ether, Ether saw a drop of 6%, Dogecoin saw a drop of 8%, and Avalanche roughly around 7%, right? So irrespective of this, um, you know, reduction, it still holds firm, right? There is still a subtle growth, and it's one thing to actually key in. When there is a drop, it's actually a good opportunity for you to buy and buy large, right? And at the same time, watch the market when it goes up again. You could possibly sell if you want to. But if you're holding Bitcoin, it is something for a long run. It's not a one-off investment, right? It's something that you hold for a long period of time. It's almost like holding real estate. So ensure that when you're buying, you're not buying in the note of wanting to sell immediately. There is no quick money in this space. I am sorry to tell you. It is just like every other asset out there. You have to take your time, watch the market before you invest to ensure that you get maximum profit in return. Now today, I am also really excited because I am going to have someone on the show today, which we spoke about last week that couldn't make it. He's none other than an OG himself, (laughs) right? If you are in the crypto space and then obviously you um, attend events a lot and you know about the main people that hold the policies, right, in Nigeria in respect to um, regulations of cryptocurrency in Nigeria, you definitely should know this person. If you don't know them, then that means you're not in this space. I'm sorry. (laughs) So Mr. Shuta is going to be joining us in a bit, right? And we are going to be talking a whole lot about 
blockchain technology, the merge of blockchain technology and artificial intelligence. I know it's a lot. It can be overwhelming sometimes because the space grows rapidly. You have to research, you have to make sure you're on point most of the time, right? It can be a lot to handle, but there's also a space on incur of blockchain technology merging with artificial intelligence and even internet of things, IOT. So you see that this is why this show is here. We are here to educate you, to inform you, right, of the latest happenings so that you don't get carried away by information. So we're going to go on a very quick break and we're going to bring on Mr. Tutor. He's going to be joining us virtually and we're going to handle some of these topics and also talk about um, his recently launched space known as Block Space, what it actually aims to do for, um, let's say, the Nigerian uh, um, people <laughs> in the space, right? What it actually aims to do for young people that are looking to break into um, the blockchain industry. So we'll go on a quick break and we'll be right back. Toodles! Hi, darlings. Welcome back from that break. I'm so sorry it took so long. Did you guys miss me? Did you miss me? I missed you if you did miss me. <laughs> All right. Now on the call, we have Mr. Chuta. I said that I will bring him here by hook or by crook. And this is really by hook or by crook. <laughs> Genuinely. Um, Mr. Chuta is the founder of BNOG, the Blockchain Nigeria user group, which is a premier blockchain and crypto assets um, um, tech com community and he's also the chairman of MBPSC which is the National Blockchain Policy Steering Committee and the CEO of Blockspace. He's a man with many a hats. Mr. Chuta, welcome to the show. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well, Purity. Awesome. I said that I will bring you by hook or by crook, and I did against all odds, against all the all the issues. Thank you so much for being here and being present. So let's um jump right into it. I want to get your perspective. What is your view on the blockchain technology transforming industries, right? And where do you see the biggest opportunities, right, for the blockchain technology breaking into, especially like in Nigeria and really to Africa. All right. Thank you so much for that question, Purity. I can hear you very well. So um, to me, I think that blockchain technology represents one of the most innovative and, and transformative um, financial opportunity for people in our generation. Because the first generator of the internet did not favor us in Africa and in the, the on the developed worlds and developing worlds. So also the, the second generation of the internet did not really allow us to play key roles, especially at the infrastructure level. But we have the opportunity of the third generation of the web, which is being powered by blockchain technology. And it's, it's a huge addition to the existing network. There are a whole lot of problems that we associated with the first and second generation of the internet, which is basically um, the rise of control and centralization. Again, to, in those two previous generations of the web, the fact that you could not have the financial instrument that is native to the internet was also a problem. So you have to plug the analog financial system into the, the traditional web to be able to um, enable people to exchange goods and services. But you know, the blockchain technology gives you the opportunity to create financial instruments to digitize assets even real world assets and put them on the internet. This time around, you're going to be using a different type of database, which is the distributed database, which is the heart of blockchain technology. Noted. And what that does is that it removes the control from a single entity and distributes it to multiple participants all over the world who have um, stake in that particular protocol. 
So that alone is, is a big opportunity for anyone who understands what the power of decentralization can do. It means that you can actually recreate existing services or recreate existing goods or products and utilize this new type of technology to sell it back into the market. And those who were not comfortable with using centralized systems, tools, or products will be happy to see that, okay, this is decentralized. So there's no middleman and there's no single point of failure. Yes. So to me, that's a very big opportunity. And for us in Nigeria and the rest of Africa, where we have grappled with um, the infrastructures that power some of these technologies over the past year, we could easily leapfrog into this new type of technology powered by blockchain technology. And that will be a huge opportunity for us as individuals, a huge opportunity for our nation, and also a huge, a huge opportunity for Africans to you know, compete favorably with the rest of the world. Because for the first time in human history, we have the opportunity to know about the development of these new technologies as soon as they are breaking out. I Thank mean, today, you. most of us are using Starlink. Starlink is the latest sector, satellite internet technology, and most of us are using it right now. I mean, the, the, the satellite mini is already even being distributed, and we're already using it. So it's not like those days when technologies will come out or will be launched in, the, in Europe or in America, and it will take years before we get to know them. Mm. Today, once these technologies are launched, once they are launched in any part of the world, we are part of it that same very day. Very true. So Mr. that Chita. is something that is happening on blockchain technology. So we are seeing the development of new types of infrastructure that will enable us to like recreate things like identity. For instance, every country grapples with the problem of identity. I mean, documents that identify someone telling you who the person is mm. and verifying that he is what he say he is and he hails from where he say he is and you could track his activity based on that ID. Right. That's Mr. a major Twitter. problem in the traditional uh, uh, technology world. Yes. But blockchain stops it 100% <laughs> by Noted. enabling developers to integrate what they call hyper um, cryptography to like um, make sure that except the user who has access to a private key signs a particular transaction, no one else will be able to have access to it. Fair. So Can you hear me? You have touched world. on a lot of points, right? Um, just so that we're sure we're actually on track. I, I apologize for mm -hmm. cutting in. You've touched on a lot of points. You, you noted on the opportunity which um, this blockchain technology actually brings to the world. And you've also noted on the fact that now it's not a thing of waiting mm -hmm. until, you know, the technology spreads across the world because once it's out there, it's out there. And for us, especially in Africa and Nigeria, we have first hand access to it which is a very good point so i want to um follow up on that um note on opportunity because we see um japan for example their new prime minister has even announced that he would be um as well looking into structuring blockchain policy for the growth of the socio-economic um, system of japan so looking at that that a country like that is you know taking that route what is your view concerning the policy in Nigeria? I mean, it has been like a very big struggle, right? I know we have the likes of CBAN, we have, you know, the um, NPBC, which obviously you are a chairman of, and some other um, committees. What is your take on the blockchain policy, one? And then two, there was a news about, um, I think, CBAN and its president. On our previous episode, we've actually talked about it, Mr. Obina, and how he was um, removed from seat for um, probably mismanagement or um, his leadership technique, right, in running the organization. So could you touch on those two um, questions for us? Honestly, I, I struggled to hear your question. 
um, you were not really speaking into the microphone of the other end, so it was difficult to hear your question. But I think I I will take on the side where you talked about the economic benefits of the plus policy that the federal government has passed. Yes. Um, you know that once a government brings out a policy document, it's a simple way of knowing that government has expressed interest in leveraging that technology for the economic well-being of its country. So that alone legitimizes the technology. So you look, first of all, at the, the fact that this technology is now legitimate. A couple of um, years ago, it was difficult for you to register a company in Nigeria that has crypto or blockchain on the name. Because to them, that terminology is unknown. But today, you can register a company and have blockchain or crypto attached to it because government has shown a positive direction and every other agency of government is bound to be adhered to that. So that alone is a benefit because you, you now have a whole lot of startups and businesses, both local and foreign, who can now come into Nigeria, register blockchain-based businesses or crypto-based businesses and operate them and become legitimate. Even recently, the Security and Exchange Commission has also gone ahead to provide what they call provisional licenses for companies that are creating new products or services in this industry. We know that um, there are exchanges, crypto exchanges that have been licensed provisionally, and even stablecoin issuers licensed uh, um, uh, provisionally also. So that alone is a huge success for us and it will drive economic growth. Then you now look at the, the fact that most young people are digital workers sure. and they live and work in the digital environment. The chances are that many of them earn money also digitally because it's so difficult to do um, wire transfer. It takes days, it's slow. They require all kinds of information. There's so much um, documentation that is required before you could um, participate in that kind of financial system. But when it comes to this technology, blockchain technology, all you need to begin to receive money from anywhere, from any time, from, from anybody. It's just a simple wallet address and you send it to whoever is the person that you send it to you, and he sends you the money instantly. No stories. So young people who are creating jobs, businesses, in the um, emerging technology environment, especially the blockchain technology space, will have access to rapid payment and settlement of transactions. That's, again, an advantage. Then what about the, the opportunity that is available for people to be employed in globally exposed organizations and even local organizations here having the opportunity to employ a lot of people because they could build products in Nigeria and export those products and serve regions far beyond our country here. I know a couple of um, blockchain uh, companies in Nigeria that have branches in, 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 in uh, Kenya, in Ghana, in South Africa, in UK, in US. And these things are being enabled by blockchain. Yes, then noted. Then you also look at the side of um, remittances too. Mm. When it comes to remittance, I mean, an average family in Nigeria has at least one or two persons living abroad, working, and they send money back home every now and then. Yes. So remittance is a big opportunity. And for people who are building these kinds of um, service and utilizing blockchain technology, they cut down, first of all, the speed of delivery for mm. remittances. They also okay. cut down the cost itself. So I can spend the whole night today counting for you 
the economy benefits. But I can just tell you that they are enormous. Thank and we you have to very be much. To the government, especially the, the, the current uh, mm -hmm. administration, the Minister of um, uh, Communication, Innovation and Digital Economy, and yeah. the, the Director General of National Agency for Technology De Development, mm -hmm. who initiated and made sure that this policy was drafted, reviewed, passed, and assented by the Federal Executive Council. Thank you very much, Mr. Chuta. That has actually been a lot. We have a limited time. But before we quickly round up, um, the other question I asked was following um, the conflict, will I say conflict, between um, CBAN and uh, Mr. Obina, which is the should I say ex-president of um, CBAN, if you could just quickly throw in your piece of one note of thoughts, one second, what is your, your thoughts on that? Okay, so um, for, for I think sincerely I have to tell you that um, it's very sad that for a young industry like us, one of the associations in Nigeria is um, enshrined in this kind of uh, political and leadership toss. As um, a key player in the industry, a very visible person, I was part of the CBAM Foundation. I was the very first uh, vice president uh, community growth. And um, we, we, the intention of the organization is to help in building the ecosystem and drive and option. Noted. Well, what you have to understand that as families grow, um, people develop different kinds of interests and um, <laughs> there are politics. Yes. Even in, in churches, mm. in your nuclear family, in the estate where you live, there are politics. Yeah. But the thing there is that um, the interest of the people should be far, far, far above personal interest. Noted. And that's what I see that is going on All in right. that particular organization. Thank you. I think personal interest is competing seriously with the interest of the industry and the interest of their members. Noted. We, Thank as, you very um, much, Mr. Tutor. That are uh, <laughs> in Beacon, we are working very hard to ensure that we help them to resolve that issue. Noted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tutor, for being here on the show. And thank you, my viewers, for tuning in. This is Daz, the Digital Asset Show on Pop Central TV 189. I would see you guys next time, next Saturday. Bye. Toodles. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Do have a wonderful weekend, darlings. Bye-bye. <laughs>